Welcome to My Forever Home, the podcast. I'm Frances Cosway and I've helped hundreds of people create forever homes. I can't wait to share the journey with you. So let's start. Hi everyone, it's Frances here from White Pebble Interiors and the creator of Your Forever Home, the First Steps online course. I wanted to chat to you today about my own sustainable forever home that we built five years ago, five and a half years ago now. It's actually hard to believe that I've been in one location for more than a couple of years, but it is the forever home. So, and we created it to be our forever home. So we are here for five years and intending to be here a lot longer. We started the process probably seven years ago. We had, I thought I'd just chat through the process with you today, but we were in a small unit that we had actually built ourselves and we had two small children. I was working from home and I shared a room with my uh, year-old daughter. My office was in her room or her room, her space was in my office and um, I would work there when she was sleeping and I would you know work there in the evenings as well so we really needed a much bigger space now my husband and I are really passionate about sustainability for several different reasons we want to be able to leave I suppose the planet that we're leaving our children in a a, a good condition my children are eight and nine and they are already worried about the environment and are incredibly conscious about um, the environment. And and we as a couple and as a family, you know, very conscious about the environment. We also wanted to save money and we also knew that building a sustainable home meant that we could have year-long comfort, year-round comfort, without having to spend exorbitant costs on energy. And so all those factors led us to create a forever home that was sustainable. And so I see it often that um, people will say to me, yes, we want a sustainable home with the idea that you have a few solar panels on the roof for your solar power and you may have uh, solar gas boosted hot water. We wanted to go a lot further than that. And my husband is really passionate about this area too, which is awesome. We were really, really aligned on our goals. And I suppose when you're building a forever home, having the payback of what you're going to be doing from a sustainability perspective, you're going to reap those rewards. So not only do we use passive solar design, which meant that we aligned the orientation of the home in line with the orientation of the site and also where we were able to maximise our winter sun and be able to minimise our summer the sun so the house wouldn't heat up really quickly. We did the obvious things like install really high quality double glazing. We have louver windows that are pitched at 32 degrees, which means that they let the beautiful winter sun in during the winter, but they actually block the summer sun in uh, summer. So the sun's rays are not hitting the glazing and warming the house up prematurely. It means, and and this is the amazing thing, is that we hardly ever put on our air conditioning. On those extreme hot days, which in Melbourne, we've only had a couple of those this summer, we would put it on. But because the insulation is so incredibly good, um, it means that we only need to put it on for a short amount of time and the insulation kicks in and does its job and basically means we can turn it off and not have to run it the whole time. On a really hot day, I can hear the evaporative coolers of our neighbours and their air conditioners going full belt and we haven't even put our air conditioner on. The same is evident in, in winter. We rarely put the heater on. Our home is incredibly temperate, particularly downstairs. And we, you know, again, we'll put the heater on for half an hour, take the chill off the air on those really cold mornings. And then we find that the, the insulation maintains that heat inside the home. And obviously with the double glazing that retains the heat inside as well. So that's fabulous. Now, the other thing is because my husband is so passionate in this area as well, after we built our home, he actually became passive house qualified. Passive house meaning that you have an energy neutral house. It's not going to take any energy. But the beauty is that we were able to incorporate a lot of passive house principles into the home without necessarily having an accredited passive house. But what it's meant is that we're able to have a really comfortable home year round 
without using lots of energy and without necessarily having a passive house. So we would have had to go to extra measures to be able to get passive um, house accredited. We do have an air sealed house. So 80% of air leakages are occurring between your windows and under your doors. And that's where you're losing a lot of heat and also gaining a lot of heat in summer. And so we were able to mitigate that. We had an air blower test, which meant we were able to test at frame stage where we were losing air and we were able to seal those up before the, the plaster went in. It also means that we've got a heat recovery ventilator and that is bringing fresh air into the home. It warms it to the ambient temperature and then it pushes that stale air out. And once we've been on holidays, you know, we're coming home to a house that doesn't smell cooped up and musty. We're coming back to a home that is, you know, really, it, it feels like it's fresh. And even when recently we had all the smoke from all the bushfires, you know, travel down to Melbourne and, um, you know, you just had to go outside and, you know, it was very, very smoky. I can't possibly imagine what that was like for people that were actually in the bushfire area because it was fairly bad in Melbourne and that transfer didn't occur in our home. We didn't have any smoke smell in our home at all, which was really wonderful. And that was because of the heat recovery ventilator filtering all our air, which is fabulous for people with a, an allergy because you've got fresh air coming in all the time and that air is being filtered from outside. So I suppose when you are building a forever home, having some sustainable principles in place, and I know in the course I cover and I've also got a um, a checklist for you about all the different things that you can do to make your house sustainable. Some of those things don't cost anything. Some of them may have a small outlay, which are going to reap rewards for you later on. And because it's for your forever home, you will actually reap those rewards. Some of them you can actually factor in and provision for and then install later. So for example, with a heat recovery ventilator, also known as HRV, you can have the ductwork installed, but then you may install the, the actual unit at a later, sta a later stage because that's uh, where some of the cost is involved. So I suppose what I want you to go away with is consider the fact that you are going to be in this house for a long time and that there are things that you can achieve in your home that means that you're living in a really comfortable space all year round. Now, we had to make compromises. Everyone works to a budget. We had a budget. But the thing that we did not compromise on because we were so aligned on what our goal and objective was, and that was to have a sustainable home as high as we could get um, it to be with the budget that we had. So we have a really high star energy rating. And look, the energy rating, that's another thing that I can talk about at another time, really is not worth that much anyway, because there are so many things that you can do using passive house principles that won't increase your star rating. So I know that our house performs much higher than the star rating indicates that it may perform. And so we weren't focused on the star rating. Sure, we wanted it to be high, but we knew that what we were doing was actually going to get a much higher benefit for us any, anyway from an energy efficiency perspective. The thing that we didn't do was sell our soul and look at our budget and say, oh, but we want the really nice kitchen and we want the really nice bathroom and we want a pool. And so we are basically going to, well, I say sell our soul, but we're not going to compromise on the sustainable outcomes that we want for our home. And we didn't do that. I've seen it happen before. Friends of mine have done it. I've seen it with um, clients of mine where they feel that having all the aesthetics in their home is far more important than the sustainable things that you can achieve with your home. And so what we did was we made sure that the build structure, the things that you can't retrofit, so the actual envelope of the building and what we were doing from a construction perspective with the envelope of our building were not compromised. We had cladding, we've got a wall wrap, we've got really good insulation. We did not compromise on any of those things and we did not compromise on the HRV because we knew what that was going to create for us. And sure, that was an extra 10 grand at the time, but it certainly allowed us to achieve what we wanted to achieve. My advice on when you're struggling at a budget perspective to say, look, do we really need to have the HRV? What you can do is provision for things. So, you know, it's going to cost you quite a few thousand dollars to get your solar panels on the roof, but you can provision for that 
and and then you can install them at a later date. But make sure that your building envelope is not compromised because at the end of the day, you cannot uh, retrofit a lot of those things. We cannot go back and take our cladding off and install the wall wrap. It's going to be really difficult to redo the insulation as well as what we've done it. And so I would encourage you to really think about what your sustainable objectives are, the fact that you are going to be in your forever home for 10 plus years, you're going to reap those rewards every single day and then some. The kitchen can be replaced. The bathroom can be replaced. Most people are replacing these things and renovating these things every 10, 15 years anyway, although I'd like to think that we're not going to renovate ours for 20 because I have chosen things on what we love and so I can't see that that's going to happen. But you can always change um, a kitchen and a bathroom, but you cannot change the construction of your building very easily and, you know, change your windows and things like that. So don't compromise there. And that's really what I want you to take away with this little snippet of video today is really think about how comfortable you want your home what sort of planet are you leaving your children and your grandchildren and how can you contribute your piece? How much energy can you save, not only from the environment by not using renewal, sorry, not using, you know, coal resources, but using your own power, but also the money that you can save from the energy that you're going to be saving as well. So our sustainable home journey was sure we had to make compromises because of our budget, but we actually compromised probably more on aesthetic things. We did not compromise on the construction. And that's what I'd like you to think about as well. I know that we all like living in nice houses and hey, you can still have a really amazing aesthetically looking place that functions, but you still don't need to compromise on the other elements. So our journey, you know, it was a great journey. I, I managed that build from lockup, which was incredibly challenging. It was an enormous learning curve and it was very, very challenging on our family, on my ability to work in the business because I was on site every single day managing trades. But it was such an amazing journey and we do open our house for Sustainable House Day. We've done it for two years. We missed a year and we most probably will do it again this year just to share the journey with others and what you can achieve. And I suppose the other thing that we set out to do was to hit the notion on the head that a sustainable house had to be one that was made out of spare tyres and mud bricks, which is what you see on, you know, the awesome uh, Kevin McLeod Grand Design Show, that you can have a home that looks conventional and but still is incredibly sustainable. You wouldn't drive past our home and think, wow, that's a, you know, a, you know, a really sustainable house. You wouldn't know. It's only when you walk inside and people say it all the time, wow, how temperate it is, how cool it is in summer and we don't have the air condition on, how warm it is in winter with no heating on. And that is the difference. And that's the enjoyment that I want you to get out of your home because it's so difficult to describe what that feels like unless you've been in a house like that. So anyway, that's that's my message for you today. I'd really love you to think about it. In the course, there are uh, lots of things for you to consider about not just the home, but also the site that you're going to be on. And so in your Forever Home, the first course, there is an entire module on sustainability and how it can impact your home and the things that you can consider. So this is just a bit of a snapshot don't forget that the launch special is on until uh, next Friday. You get over $900 worth of bonuses, including a consultation with me personally, um, a bonus module about volume builder versus custom builder. And uh, there's certainly some big sustainable considerations to consider with a volume builder versus a custom build. And you also get a copy of the book, Your Forever Home, and I sign it for you, pop it in the post, and you get to have that as a, a hard copy um, as your companion throughout your forever home journey. So uh, check out whitepebbleinteriors.com.au backslash courses so that you can um, have a look at what's inside the course for yourself. There's also a little video um, to give you a look, a sneak peek on the inside. I'm also running a webinar on Tuesday night, so be sure to register for that also at your forever home, sorry, whitepebbleinteriors.com.au backslash events. You'll be able to register for the webinar where I go through some of the preliminaries, what you can expect to prepare for in your preliminaries, and also a little bit of an expectation on timelines. That's Tuesday night, 
8 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Daylight Savings Time. So make sure you register for that too. All right, have a lovely Thursday. I hope you've noticed that I've got my loud earrings back on today. I'm off to Adelaide, but I am going to check in tomorrow for our Q&A session at 10 a.m. on Friday. So that's tomorrow, 10 a.m., fixed time. I would love to see you there. Make sure you bring your questions and I look forward to seeing you then. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of My Forever Home. If you're ready to renovate or build a new home and you need help to create a beautiful and functional forever home, you can book a chat with me directly at whitepebbleinteriors.com.au backslash chat. Have a great day.